Hello everyone, my name is Teacher Stephanie. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you for being here. I am an online teacher and I teach people and coach people how to do that online as well. On my channel, you're gonna find videos all about online teaching and the different companies you can work for. Um, and some tips and advice on what you can do with them. Today, in this video, we are going to be talking about the OutSchool class types. There are four class types that we are gonna go over. We are going to talk about some examples where I'm gonna show you my own examples, the four types that I teach in my own classroom with OutSchool, and I'm going to go over some examples of what maybe you could teach for OutSchool with those class types. So. Let's get to it, let's get started and um, go over our school class types. Woo, intro video. <laughs> Like I said, my name is Stephanie. I have been an online teacher for three years now, and I also help coach teachers to become online teachers like myself. So if this is something that you wanna do, please reach out to me. You can email me. I have links down in the description box with different resources for you. Um, I really enjoy helping people start teaching online. It's been such a joy for me to be able to stay at home with my three little kids and to still teach. Those are my two passions and so it's been a wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to do both. So um, if that's something you want to do, please reach out to me. I'd love to tell you what's available for you and help get you teaching online. Now, like I said, this video is about teaching for out school, the four class types. If you don't know what out school is, I will leave a video here on what is out school. I'll also leave videos in the description box for my whole OutSchool playlist on how to apply, um, the tips and tricks for the application questions, your application video. I will leave all of that down in the description box if you wanna check that out so that I don't waste any of your time here if you are here just for the OutSchool four class types, okay? Now, if you want more online helpful teaching tips, I try to upload every weekend something to this channel. So hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when I upload a new video and you can get all the fresh content that I am putting out there, okay? Now, let's go to the OutSchool class types. This is not the subject that you are teaching. I wanna be clear here, this is not um, the subjects that you are teaching. This is not English, art, social studies, science. That's different. You're gonna have the topics, but you're gonna have the class types. OutSchool puts these into four class types so that learners can see what they're signing up for. They're going to vary in time and they're going to vary in content. So they're gonna be different ones. That's why there's four class types. So let me describe a little bit about these. Now, first we're going to go over the live classes, the classes that meet live, video chatting, meet, and then go. The first class we're going to talk about is your one-time class. This should be the first class that you list. This is the first one they want you to list on OutSchool is the one-time class, okay? So these one-time classes, you wanna make sure that they don't need to know anything beforehand and they're not gonna to need to do anything after. Like you're not going to have to teach them something in another class because that's not one time. <laughs> Sounds self-explanatory, but you'd be surprised. If you're just starting out and this is your first time listing a class and this is your first one, you wanna list your one-time class, be flexible with your times, okay? So list your for one time class and then offer it a bunch of times. Make sure it's like the basics in college, it's your English 1010 class, English 101, where you're going, okay, I'm gonna list this a bunch of times so that people can take it. It's your ABCs class, it's your addition, it's your basic one that anybody can take and then list multiple times so that you can get a few classes under your belt, get some reviews and get some parents to like and save you as a teacher. And that way when you list the ones that you're more passionate about, you already have those parents locked in, okay? You're kind of like gaining your following here on OutSchool. My example of my one-time class is one of my favorites. It's my mythological creatures class. I have a sample of this class. I, I show you exactly what we do in class. It, it's the exact class on there. I'll put the video here and it, we just meet one time. We talk about five mythological creatures, what a mythological creature is, and then we read a story and then we create our own mythological creature. Some ideas for the one-time course would be holiday craft making. They meet one time, they make the craft, they leave. 
um, an animal study. Let's learn about guinea pigs. That is the best part of the class. It is so fun to see what they come up with, but they don't need to know anything beforehand. They don't need to do anything after. It is fantastic. I love teaching that class. And the great thing about these one-time classes is that they can fill in the gaps in your schedule. If you have courses that go Monday through Thursday, but you have Fridays open, you can put the one-time class there. So one-time classes are great for that and great to just do a quick listing, get it approved and start teaching. Now I want to mention if you're having any trouble with creating your one-time classes, creating any of these classes, I offer coaching services where we do a consultation. We sit down and talk about your ideas, what you want to teach, what you're thinking of for some activities, and then we go and I create you a lesson plan. I give it to you and you can submit that to OutSchool. So if you're having any sort of trouble with that, coming up with what you want to teach, even some activities on what you can do to teach that, please come to me and schedule a consultation at teachingstephanie.com. I would love, love, love to help you out there. So please don't hesitate to ask and I would love to sit down with you and schedule that out. Now let's go over the second class type, which is the multi-day class. Now these multi-day classes meet over multiple days and even over weeks. Now the multi-day course is great for those topics that you cannot cover in one class and you need to build upon their knowledge from previous classes. There are different types of the multi-day class. So there's kind of subcategories within the multi-day class. There's the short course, which meets one time over between two and seven weeks. That's just the short class. There are the summer camps, which meet a minimum of two times a week over one to two weeks. So they're little short camps. Then there is the semester course. This is the big kahuna. You've got eight weeks of learning ahead of you, but it's great for those homeschoolers that are going, I need third grade science. They need to have the foundational skills. They need to do the scientific process. They need to have all of those things. And so they're doing an eight week course to go over all those things. Now, my example, this is the class I teach the most often, and it is my multiplication multi-day course. Um, in this one, I teach eight classes total and it goes over two weeks. So there's four days one week, four days the next week and eight lessons total. In that class, we start off with the foundation of what is multiplication? What what are we doing when we're multiplying? It's repeated addition. Then eventually on the last day, we'll have gone over all of the multiplication facts and they will have worked on memorizing all of them. So it built on each other day after day until they have met the end objective, the learning goal for the class. Okay, so that's the multi-day class. Some ideas for the multi-day class might be a historical event course. So a semester long course on World War II. Writing a story course where they learn about characters, setting, they start brainstorming ideas and the problem that their characters might come up with. If you're ever getting stuck on what you should teach for OutSchool, I've got two things for you. One, you can go and watch my video. I have a video telling you the brainstorming process, how you can come up with ideas that include your passion passions and expertise, and also the demand from parents and students. So they come together so that you can create a class that you can teach one, and also that parents are interested in purchasing. So it fills those two needs. You can watch that video here. I also have an OutSchool guide with that same process in it. There's a worksheet in there where you can brainstorm all of this out on paper. You can download the guide down below in the description box. I will leave a link. All you have to do is enter your email. It is completely free. So download the guide for all of my best tips and tricks for OutSchool. Okay, let's talk about class number three, the ongoing classes. Now these right now in November of 2020 are the most popular classes right now. These are kind of your subscriber classes. You're going to get people that subscribe week to week. They can cancel at any time. They might be there week one, not do week two because they're going on vacation and then come back week three and four. So these students will be sporadically coming in and out, subscribing, not subscribing, might be popular in the summer, might be a little less in the school in the fall because of the school year and then in the winter pick back up. Now this is still a live meeting face to face. You're meeting however many times you decide in one week, but you're they're subscribing for that week and then they can pay again the next week if they want to keep coming or they can leave. All right, but you're still meeting live with them on video chat. Now, I do not have a class listed yet on this. I am working on it right now as we speak, but my class example on this is be an artist study. So they don't need any previous knowledge to come if they're jumping in at week five. They don't have any previous knowledge of what we've done before in those classes. It's an artist study. So they'd come with a brand new artist each week. We would talk about the artist, learn a little bit about their life and why they're famous. And then we might do an art project with that artist. So this is an idea of an ongoing class. 
They don't need to have any previous knowledge, but they know that, hey, if I like that class, I get to do it again next week. I know she's gonna do it again next week with a different artist. So what I like to tell people here is that it's the same format, but different content. So you'll have kind of a generic plan here of what's gonna happen, but the who it's about will change each time. So you could do this with science experiments. You could go through the scientific process. Each time it will be the same, but a different experiment that you're learning, okay? A different topic theory that you're learning about each week. Great ideas, great examples for these ongoing classes are um, song and dance classes, any kind of musical instrument instruction because they can subscribe, they can take their lesson that week. If they can't show up the next week, it's okay. You're still not building on each other. You're just kind of giving them instruction, maybe basic piano skills. You're just doing a different song each time. If you're building, then you're going to want to do the multi-day course. Your class will not get approved if you are um, building upon that knowledge. You'll have to change the class type or you'll have to change that. So make sure you have the format, but different topics, okay? That's the ongoing class. Okay, the last class. Now this class, you do not have a live meeting. The last class is the flex class or flexible class. Now this one's awesome, especially as a parent in a pandemic, because they can take these classes in a flexible time range. So you set the amount of time they can take them, but you don't meet live. These are all done over messaging in the classroom page on OutSchool's platform. So it's all done there. You're just messaging back and forth when they get to it, when you get to it and you message back and forth. I will say, make sure that you message promptly at least within 24 hours. Now, the reason I love the Flex course is because I get to reuse my resources. So I tell people, if you have a multi-day course, reuse that into a Flex course. You already have the materials, you already have the resources, just reuse it into creating a Flex course. So let me tell you my example. I told you that I teach a multi-day course of multiplication facts. It builds on each other, it's eight lessons. Now, all I did was record myself teaching it on Zoom with no students. I recorded myself teaching those same eight lessons. I gave them the same workbook and I turned it into a flex course so that they can watch those videos anytime they need to within that week. So instead of day one, it's week one and they get the whole week to watch the video and complete the assignment. Reusing those resources is the best use of your time. You've already got a class and you've worked out the kinks, you know how to teach it just record yourself, make it into a flex class, and then post it. The great thing for me is that I can have a lot of these classes going at the same time and I'm not needing to physically schedule them and be there live in my classroom. I can do this whenever I have time and it's somewhat passive income. I say that because there is a lot of work up front for these classes. I did have to create the videos. I had to schedule the posts. I schedule for the week what's going out that week. Um, and I did have to really plan ahead of time for that course. Once it's all done though, now I'm currently right now teaching eight classes at a time. The kids just message me when they have a question or they have a problem. I ask them little prompts like, give me a thumbs up if you're feeling confident about the threes and they give me a little thumbs up. I do little things like that for interaction. But for the most part, they have a question, I hurry an email back, answered, done. I love the flex classes. Now, let me give you some flexible class ideas. Okay, a great one here would be, so reading skills. If you're going over some reading skills, again, recycle that material, use it in a flex class. Have them do it on their own pace. A novel study. Now, these are great because they're going to be reading on their own and they can do it on their own time and then they can check in with the video and go, what did you think about this? They can answer questions after they've read it on their own schedule. I love the novel study with the flex class. Another great one, coding computer skills. The best thing you can do with the flex class is to recycle the material material you already have and make it into a flex class. Okay, those are the four class types. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, a like, and be sure to subscribe so that you can be notified when I put out more content for online teachers. I hope you can find the fun in online teaching. I'm teacher Stephanie, and I will see you next time as we're talking about pricing and scheduling your obstacle classes. And as my hero, Mr. Roger says, let's make the most of this beautiful day. Goodbye. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos of balancing teaching and motherhood, go check out my channel. I will see you in the classroom.